So you've started booking some photo clients and now you want to book even more. Well, I'm gonna tell you the three things that I've done that have made the biggest difference in scaling how many clients I can book in my own business. Number three is my absolute favorite of them. So you definitely wanna stick around for that. But I'm also curious to see which one is your favorite. So after you're done with this video, let me know in the comments below. It's showtime. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California, and I like being in business. When I first got into the game, I felt guilty about charging a ton of money. I didn't know if what I offered was valuable to people. I didn't want to feel like I was ripping anybody off or like I was an imposter. And I had done like magazine covers and I've been, you know, I have a photo as a movie cover on Netflix and I've been, you know, up on the big screen in Times Square and I've been flown around the country to photograph people who are running some of the biggest companies in our country. And then it finally hit me one day that it's like, oh, I guess I'm pretty good at what I do. And people actually, you know, enjoy working with me after like, you know, my seventh six figure year in a row. So once I really started scaling these things, the business just totally blew up and I'm stoked to share these findings with you. The first getting super clear on your message. The second identify new places to get clients. And the third, outsourcing. So let's talk about your, your message, getting super clear on that. This is something that will come with experience. Now, if you're like, I don't have a ton of experience, don't fret because you can have a very clear brand message and it's going to change over time. Think of it like taking a cooking class. You love cooking. I'm also making this up on the fly. So I'm really hoping this works out as a great metaphor. You take a cooking class, you're like, wow, I really like cooking. This is great. And then you get home, you've got all these blogs, recipes saved, and you start cooking. You're like, okay, grilling is my jam. I don't like baking. I'm just going to focus on grilling. You started out with the big, I love cooking. You've narrowed it down to, I love grilling. Now, when you look up recipes, when you're going to have a dinner party, you're going to focus on the grill. That is the same with our brand message. You're going to empower people, help them feel good about themselves. That's where you're going to start out. You're going to take gorgeous photos photos, make it a fun, empowering experience, groovy. Then you get more specific. And this is the thing I've worked with a brand manager on, my social media manager, who is a brilliant copywriter, given I'm good at doing these things for other people, it is way more difficult to do them for yourself. I will say that. And it was, it was hard to admit that like really hard to admit that, okay, I might be really good at this, but I'm not good at doing it for myself. Not as good as I am at doing it for other people. So I had somebody that I trusted who wrote a lot of my content and who knew my brand inside and out. And we did a deep dive. She interviewed a ton of my clients and my styling team and knew the right questions to ask. And she helped me develop this really crystal clear brand message as to who exactly we attract because I thought before it was like we have maternity clients we have empty nesters we have recent divorcees we have clients who have been on fitness or weight loss journeys we speak to all of them differently but there's one overarching thing that brings all of them together and we really nailed that down and it felt so good and when she presented it to me it was like of course how have I not seen this like I've seen it and I knew it was there, but she put it into words. Totally a game changer. Now every social post, every line of text on my website, every everything I do, I even tweak the way I do my consultations after this. And my booking rates are like almost 100%, which is nuts. It feels good. So getting really clear on your message, figuring out exactly who you serve, who they are as people, beyond the milestone they're celebrating, what defines them. And then how does your product and service feed that? So getting clear on that, and this could be working with a brand developer, a copywriter, tons of different people. Smart Cookie Media is who I work with. Nicole is amazing and someone who's become a close friend. I'm going to put her link down below. She's also done a couple of videos with me in the membership site. So if you go to boudoirguild.com and join, she'll tell you all about what kind of posts to write on social media, how to do email marketing, all this copy and content creation. She and I walk you through all of that. So someone I, I definitely trust to work with my own business and who I'd love to share with you. So I recommend having somebody else help you with those things. And if you want to tackle it yourself, great. You will probably do a great job. Somebody else could help you do it better. All right, number two, 
finding new places where you can attract your clients. Most photographers get started. They post on their Facebook page, their Instagram account. Maybe, you know, if you're in a mom's group or some other social activity group, you spread the word there. You get in their email newsletter. You join your chamber of commerce. You share what you're doing there you might get some business. But eventually, you will have tapped your social circle and you need to get outside of that and bring in new people who have never heard of you. So when you really know who your clients are, kind of back to point number one, you can find out where they're hanging out, whether it's different exercise groups, different spas, skincare places, any kind of activity group. Maybe it's a coding place for women who code, things like that. It could be anywhere your ideal client hangs out. Get really, really creative. Do some deep dive research. If you already photographed people in this group, what do they do for fun? Where do they go? Where do their friends hang out? Just ask. People love to share their feedback and opinion and feel valued. So you can always just reach out to people and ask and go to those places. It could be new clothing stores. It could be an esthetician's office, a new hair salon. It could be any women's group. It could be a church group. It could be an after school program. It could be literally anywhere your clients hang out. And when you start going to these new venues, these new places online or in person, you'll be exposed to new people. You can spread your message to more people and you will book more clients. Now, don't just go in slinging business cards like you're delivering newspapers. I don't even know if people still do that anymore because that's not how you book clients. You go in, you introduce yourself, you add value, you build relationships, and then you book people. Like my chamber of commerce, I want to do more commercial work. I joined there. I offered to do headshots for the board. So the board members came in. I set up my backdrop and lights in the chamber office. I photographed all the board members who hate having their photo taken but I'm good at what I do and I'm quick. They got this killer headshot that they actually like. It was done in like three minutes and a handful of them have been referring clients to me regularly. So donating that one afternoon of time has way more than paid for itself And I have a cool new social circle of local business owners. So who knows what the future will bring, but it's only going to be good things because I surround myself with people who value me and what I do and who I genuinely want to be around, even if it wasn't a business transaction. All right. The third one. And like I said, my absolute favorite, probably going to be yours too. Once you start outsourcing, I love running every aspect of my business. But I've also learned that there are some things I love doing a lot more than others, like being in the room photographing a client. That's my favorite part. I enjoy writing copy. I enjoy creating new ad campaigns. I enjoy managing the finances, seeing how much money I'm making. I really enjoy all those things. But I only have so much time in a week. I can only do so many things. And I can only make so much money if I'm doing all of those things. You're like, well, the money isn't that important. I'm like, money is time and money is freedom. Money is a tool to accomplish something. I can't pay off my parents' home if I don't have the extra money to do that. I can't take my family traveling if I don't have extra money to do that. I can't build up enough reserves so that I can stop and travel for six months or go start another business while I scale this one up even further because now I have employees working for me. I can't do these other things I want to do without funding. So I outsource my work, my social media creation, my email marketing, my copywriting, my editing. That was a hard one to let go of until I found this killer editor who charges me a really good rate and does a better job than me. Now it's like, cool, take it. I send her every shoot. I get them all back in like four days and they look incredible. Now in all my IPS sessions, I'm showing my clients fully edited magazine ready photos. My sales average has gone up and I'm spending, you know, 60 bucks a shoot to get everything edited. It's incredible. Small price to pay, but it's not just the 60 bucks. I have four to six hours of my life back. So outsourcing these things has allowed me to take days off in the week. I actually have one, sometimes two days off every week. And I could take two days off. I have two days scheduled, but I end up doing things because I genuinely love what I do. And I find, you know, I'll answer emails and field calls or things if people want to pay me. I will happily take their money on my day off. But I have the choice because I bring in enough clients that I can pay contractors to do these other things, which allows me to have the freedom to decide how I want to spend my time. That is why we're doing this, because I can make people feel amazing about themselves and improve the quality of their lives while I do the same thing for myself. 
that's a win for everybody. So there you go. The three things that you can do to get more photography clients. Get super clear on your brand message so you can better connect with people. Find new places where people are hanging out so you can connect with them with that polished new brand message. And three, outsource everything that doesn't absolutely 100% require you to do, which when you really get down to it is nothing in your business because there is always someone who can do any of the tasks that we do in our business and they will do it better than us. It was really hard to grasp that, but after seeing it done, it's so liberating and I can't wait for you to experience that also. So if you want to learn more about the marketing, because we got to do things ourselves in the beginning to get the capital to then outsource, I've got a great video called my five favorite ways to get clients in 2022 or how to scale your business to six figures. Both of those videos are great linked down below. And if you want me to walk you through how to do all these things step-by-step step, very, very clearly and thoroughly head over to boudoirguild.com and join the membership site. You are amazing. I'll see you inside. 